I've been getting freaking decisions lately, so maybe I gotta stop saying that I'm looking for the finish. That I'm ready to go all three rounds. I'm gonna go to decision, but I, but it will be an excellent performance. Download the All Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. The first thing that I wanted to get into is uh, Theo Vaughn. You know what I mean? Like, wh- that's a pretty big guest. You know what I mean? That's probably the biggest celebrity guest you've had so far, right? On Guest the Fighter? Yeah. So uh, what happened was like my manager knew his manager. So it was like, oh, like set up like a little like meet and greet thing after the show. And then so I met him and I was like, okay, well, like, here's my chance. I'm going to shoot my shot. And he was like super cool about like doing it. And uh, and he like hit it out of the park. Definitely, definitely did. You know, I mean, that was a a, a big, uh, big opportunity. And the uh, who is your dream guest for Guest the Fighter, though? I don't know. I never really thought of it. I never thought mm-hmm. I would get, like, Theo Vaughn on it, let alone any, like, you know what I mean, anyone bigger. <laughs> it would have to be somebody that knows fighting, right? It can't just be some random celebrity. Yeah, and be like Mike Tyson or something like that. Oh, wow. That'd be cool. Maybe this time yeah. next year, you'll have Mike Tyson on Guest the Fighter. I'm, no, yes, I'm crossing my fingers. All right, uh, let's get into the, the fight coming up. September 16th, UFC Noche. You return against uh, Tracy Cortez. You know, you, after the last fight, you, you, you mentioned M- Macy Barber, Casey O'Neill. Were any of those matchups ever discussed? Honestly, I don't really know. Like, my, I let the guys do it, the coaches and, like, my team and everything. I, I have no idea what they discuss behind, like, closed doors. I'm just, like, their little video game. I'm just so... The one in there doing it. I don't know about matchups and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you just kind of, like, that weight is not on your shoulders. Yeah, like, so what happened was after my last fight, then they're like, okay, when do you want to fight? And I'm like, well, I didn't take any damage, so, like, whatever you guys think. And then I ended up, uh, like, just hearing, just hearing like in in conversation they were on the phone with like my manager and like talking about names and everything and i just read on a piece of paper tracy cortez a date and i think it said like to be determined or something and then uh so i just like kind of like looked and then they like saw that i looked and then so chris is like well what do you think and i'm just like sure whatever whatever you guys think like let's do it (laughs) and then we we said, yeah, and then now here we are. Trace Cortez, you know, another ranked opponent. She's sitting at number 14. What do you think of her and, and the skill set? I mean, I think she's solid. She's obviously number 14 for a reason. Um, but I think that, like, she only fights once a year. And I think I'm, I'm like, you know, just coming off that fight. It's like I'm just getting right back in there. Like, I'm still kind of, like, riding that. Um, but... Yeah, I think she's solid. What do you, what do you think of the momentum in in fighting, especially you know in sports, momentum is is important, but in fighting, how important is that? I think it's super important. Like I literally remember being in the cage like it was two weeks ago. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't that long ago that I fought. So I think it's it's nice. Like I'm I'm comfortable. I'm like ready and. I, I think it's good to be active. Without a doubt. And you, you mentioned uh, Cortez's inactivity. She's only fought like once a year since 2020, around a 16-month layoff for her this time around. Do you do you believe in ring rust? I don't really believe that. Like, I, I think it is definitely a thing for some people, but I don't think it really is for her just because she always only fights once a year. So it's like she dedicates herself to the camp and fights once a year and like you know that's her thing so i uh i don't i don't think there'll be any ring rust for for her could you fight once a year and be satisfied um probably i mean probably like it, i i definitely wouldn't want to only fight once a year but um but i don't know maybe maybe it would be a thing i don't know 
maybe if it was like $10 million a fight, then once a year is not that bad. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the longest period between fights for you? Um, I, I, I had one, I think like eight months before Contender Series. I had a long layoff because they, I, I, I fought and then it had been a bit and I was like kind of looking for a fight and then I got offered the contender series opportunity. So I'm like, okay, obviously I'm going to take that. I'm not going to fight before that. So I had like a longer layoff in between that. Did, did you feel any like ring rust in, in that fight that you had after returning? No, because I was always still in the gym. Like it, I was always still sparring. I was always... I don't know. Uh, I think if you're still active, it's not really a thing. We talk about uh, your last fight. Let's talk about Vancouver. You know, you get to rewatch that. And uh, when you rewatch it, you know, what, what, is, what are the emotions you have coming through? Oh, that was so awesome. I, it, it was so cool to be able to fight like in Canada. Like I, I feel like as soon as you got into the fighter hotel, then it was like you could feel the energy I remember even calling it before. I'm like, I could see Canada going six straight on this, but um, but yeah, it was like, it was such a, it was just such a cool experience. That everything about it, my my uh, hotel room was, it, I got so lucky. It was like right on the corner, so it's like I could look out onto the water. There's like people rowing in the morning, like just the beautiful mountains, and like it was unbelievable i would just i set up my chair and i would just like sit there and look at the view for it was like the best fight week ever because of that was there any po moment where you're like man this going like a little too perfect you know like everything is just a little too good yeah i thought of that for a second but then i'm like oh whatever i it, <laughs> maybe maybe that's true but i'm not gonna focus on it <laughs> yeah for sure um, when you look at the the performance that you had against Miranda Maverick, was there anything that you didn't like? You know, the first round was a, a, a mix up right there, right? Yeah, obviously, you know, I didn't like being stuck in that position. I knew I wasn't gonna get armbarred, but at the same time, I couldn't I couldn't go anywhere. If I moved, then she would have been able to armbar me, and I was just like damn so i after that round i i knew chances are i lost that round like she's in a submission attempt what it looks like uh even though we're kind of just like stalemate because if she moved then i get my arm out and i start pounding her on top and i move and then she actually gets the arm so we were we were kind of euchred a little bit but so i was unhappy obviously about losing that first round but then Going into the second, I knew I got to get to work and then just continued with the, that momentum. You know, you got a lot of praise for that performance. I felt like you did really well in the second and third rounds. Some are saying that that was the best performance of your UFC career. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I mean, I hope that every fight is my best performance. You know, I, I want to be evolving after each fight. So that, that's the ideal situation. And between camps did you do any cross training um a, a little bit like i uh so after uh, before i jumped into camp here i went out to vegas and uh trained at syndicate there with uh it, i i have a lot of friends in vegas a lot of, i know a lot of great people there and so i was like blessed to be able to uh to spend some time with them and like there's a wealth of knowledge there like the fight capital of the world so I was able to like get privates in with like coaches and have more time to like break down like little intricate details of my game. Um, so it was like, I guess like a work vacation. And uh, and it was like, I had a, a, an excellent time there, but then I got back right into camp, right, right into business. Yeah, it's so cool to be able to go somewhere. And even though you represent Niagara top team, you could actually go and work with other coaches and work with them one on one without it being a problem, right? It, that's what the sport is about, the martial arts. Exactly. And it's like all the best coaches, if there is somebody that's like hungry for knowledge, like they want to pass on that knowledge. That's what great coaches do. Like that's 
that's why they're great coaches. They're they're heartless. Like they uh, they they the athletes are always kind of like using and abusing them. And uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful for my coaches. I know I use them, abuse them more. I accidentally need my coach in the head today. You know. Wow. So I uh, <laughs> I I'm thankful to to all the coaches out there. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, I- I- any coaches in particular that you worked with? Could you reveal that? Uh, so in Vegas, the, I worked with Mike Pyle. I got some great time with him. Um, I worked with um, mo- like it, John Wood. I worked with him. And then they got a wrestling coach there. I forget his name. It's on the tip of my tongue. But I, uh, I worked with him. And... Um, Alexander Almeida, I was, I was able to work with him. I, it was nice to to uh, work with all the girls there, and it was. Uh, and then back home with my coaches. And and back home, it seems like you've built like a, a a decent crew of women around you, right? Yeah, uh, honestly, ever since uh, the UFC Vancouver, I feel like it's really surged MMA within Canada. And so a lot of it like kind of shook things up. And so there's been a lot of girls like traveling more and like just really helping me out, like reaching out, like, hey, I can help out with this. If you ever want sparring, if you ever want to train, you want to do this. Like, I'm very blessed to have so many talented females that are like helping me out. That's like within a two hour drive. And, uh, and yeah, it's like, I think it's just opened up a lot of doors and I have like amazing training right, right now. I'm so thankful. Who, who has been there since the beginning, so to say, like someone that's not from your team, but that hasn't been coming in and helping you kind of like behind the scenes that we don't know about. I would say, um, my kind of longest going girl is this girl named Felicia. She's a jujitsu she girl she just uh she actually won abu dhabi world just a couple whatever it was like two weeks ago or something like that she is so talented and she kind of she like flies under the radar but wow like she she's been kind of with me since like day one i met her through mitch gagnon when he was still fighting in the ufc he's like oh we got this jujitsu girl at our gym, uh, like I'll, I'll bring her down to train sometimes. So like literally back, I was still an amateur at the time. She would come down sometimes or I would go up there and we would train together. Now she lives in Toronto or Hamilton. So it's like, I'm just trying to bring her closer and closer and closer. <laughs> but uh, ideally she becomes my live-in training partner. But uh, but yeah, she's been one of, one of my girls from day one. That's great to see, you know, going to the big teams and, and training there is, is is great and all but to have something at home surrounding you to help you it's nothing's better than that right honestly it's it's so nuts i i've been having like girls that have say i've like sparred with them before they'll like reach out again like hey let me know if you want some sparring and everything like it i feel like canada is like really coming together to try to like continue to to build me and other like you know boxing wrestling all all of the martial arts like it's it's crazy the the surge that it's brought yeah that's great to hear so what are you expecting out of the performance you know i mean what do you think you need to do to defeat tracy tracy cortez because i don't were you ranked after the last fight and did they take you out the rankings or am i i'm confused by this because when i look today you were your name wasn't on there yeah, no, I got bumped off because Silva fought, and so she got put in, and they went to do, 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 do. so, and I was already at fifteen though. But after this fight, I'll be back in there. <laughs> Above Silva, right? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. Good. Hopefully, hopefully, right? All right. Um, yeah. What do you expect in this one? You know, I mean, um, Cortez. She's known for a lot of decisions. You know, she can ground out, grind out wins. Is that what you're expecting? Just a grind, grind fest that like you really have to dig deep in this one, even more than against uh, Miranda Maverick? Yeah, you know, like I, I always say, oh, I'm always looking for the finish. I'm always looking for the finish. But you know, 
I've been getting freaking decisions lately, so maybe I gotta stop saying that I'm looking for the finish. That like, I'm ready to go all three rounds. I'm gonna go to decision, but it's, but it will be an excellent performance, you yeah. know. And then maybe now the decision will come. <laughs> or maybe. I mean, the, the decision will come. <laughs> uh, maybe reverse psychology on yourself. Exactly. <laughs> All right, all right. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I mean, this is a this is a, a solid matchup and a top fifteen fight for sure. Um, a couple questions about the division. The first question, obviously, is about Rose Nama Yunus. She's number four. I saw she's number four on your top five list of best fighters. Yeah. How do you feel about her entering the flyweight flyweight mix? I think it's cool. You know, I uh, I think she's obviously super super talented and. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that fight tomorrow. All right. And, you know, since you never got a chance to fight Joanna, do you think you could see a possibility right now that she's, she's at flyweight, you could fight Rose, right? It's just, it could come to 2024. It could come to that, right? Yeah, that's what do they say. When your idols become your rivals, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and uh, the main event for UFC Doce, the same night you're fighting, uh, the title fight will happen as well. Um, do you expect a lot of grappling in that fight? Because Shevchenko has been known to grapple from time to time. Yeah, I I can see it being a, a grappling fight. I, I Yeah, I was thinking of that. I, I don't know who's going to win, though. I'm, for every day, I'm back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. But I, th I can see there being quite a bit of grappling. Yeah, and do you feel like we'll see a better version of Grasso or a better version of Shevchenko in this fight, the rematch? I think we're going to see a better version of both. Like, mm -hmm. because Grasso, it, as soon as you get the belt, it's like you automatically develop the, the, the confidence that you should have already realistically had. Um, and then so finally you, you get, so then you're automatically evolved. Whereas Shevchenko coming off a loss, you know that didn't sit well with her and she's hungry to get that back and like she's not messing around. So I don't know. It's gonna be a nuts fight, I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely nuts. But you'll be you'll be watching it closely, yeah. right? Like that's something <laughs> you have to really watch with your own eyes, right? It's Kate's side and all that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to that fight. Yeah, because you know. You're in the mix. Um, I saw that uh, you're a big fan of uh, '90s rap. Who are your favorites? I just, I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan. Like, I don't know a whole bunch of '90s rap or anything. But I, if I had to choose, that'd be like the genre. But I like still, still Dre is my favorite song. Like that 2001 Chronic CD. That one will always be forever in my brain. I'm like the best ever. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, you know, you're back in action September 16th in Las Vegas. You get to return to Las Vegas, which is always good. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for the time and all the best in the upcoming fight. 2024 is coming. Looking forward to it.